this is a bus stuck in traffic jam with cars and uh, nobody likes it. And this is the one that is speeding along its own dedicated lane and it is liked by everybody. Well, <laughs> almost everybody. But what should these lanes be like to be more efficient? There are various options here and we'll discuss them right now. In general, there are two main options for placing dedicated lane on the street. In the right lane, right next to the sidewalk and on the street axis. Actually, there could also be tunnels and overpasses, as well as streets reserved only for public transport, but more on that another time. Dedicated lanes close to the sidewalk have become a standard solution in many cities, especially for buses, and uh, at the first glance it seems to be quite an obvious thing, because people walk on the sidewalks, so it's logical for public transport to stop as close to them as possible, allowing passengers to board directly from there. But the problem is that not only public transport passengers hang out on the sidewalks. City streets are multifunctional environments where people live, work and uh, relax. A resident needs to park a car, a store delivery needs to unload goods, and a hotel guest with a large suitcase takes a taxi. These are just a few of many possible scenarios, and in each of these cases you also need to have sidewalk access. As a result, every car pulling into a parking space or stopping to unload must cross the public transport lane which can significantly disrupt service or completely block it. Another issue is uh, right turns. Our lane will be constantly crossed by numerous side streets or courtyard entrances into which someone will regularly turn. And uh, every such intersection is an extra conflict point with a possible delay or even an accident. This adds stress to public transport drivers, compelling them to drive slower to ensure they can reach act in time. In a dense urban environment, such interruptions can happen literally every few meters, so there can be a lot of such stress. And if an accident happens, it causes traffic delays and inconvenience for hundreds or even thousands of passengers. Various objects on the sidewalk can also block bus drivers' view of everything that is happening there and uh, in this situation it will be difficult for public transport to be fast. Actually, it's uh, not for nothing that in many countries the right lane is considered the slow one and uh, it's the lane where cyclists are supposed to ride according to traffic rules. Also, such dedicated lanes work especially poorly where drivers traditionally ignore parking rules and city authorities are helpless in enforcing order on this issue. And one more point is that in some places buses may find it geometrically challenging and trams just impossible to turn right from the far right lane, if we talk about right-hand traffic, of course. So, as you can see, curbside dedicated lanes have quite a lot of downsides that greatly reduce their efficiency. A good alternative here is to place public transport in the street axis, which has become almost a standard for trams. In this case, public transport is no longer hindered by right turns, taxis and store deliveries. But, of course, this design requires island stops for passengers and traffic lights with separate phases for public transport to give it priority at intersections. This can be done not only for trams. Eindhoven is a great example of how a fully bus-based system with lanes in the middle of the streets can work perfectly well. Moreover, bus lanes are physically separated from cars by green islands with trees on them, which makes streets look much better. Traffic at intersections is stopped by specially adjusted traffic lights when the bus approaches. So, thanks to this and a complete physical separation from other traffic, buses run quickly and uh, without delays. Thanks to this planning, buses don't care about someone's parking lot or unloading beer at the store. They can only occasionally overtake each other. The stops here are made on islands, letting buses stay in their lane, but that takes extra street space, so it's not an option everywhere. To save street space and uh, make it easier to transfer and navigate for passengers, tram lines can be combined with bus lines. Unfortunately, in this case it won't be possible to make our beloved greenway, so it's better to make such combinations in small areas where it's really needed. 
So, in general, the conclusion is that a center dedicated lane generally allows public transport to be faster and more protected from cars, and therefore more efficient, but this solution won't fit everywhere, so it must be applied reasonably and carefully.